Okay, so just stick with me for one second. So every once in a while, I make a painting video, and I always end up complaining during said video about how mentally painful, strenuous, and laborious the process is. But I always end up ignoring my previous grievances and convincing myself that no, Joanna, this time, this time will be different. You will be able to create a piece of art that does not just completely suck your soul out of your body in the process. This time was no exception. That's exactly what happened. In fact, I was so convinced that this time would be different that I tried to make this video twice. The first time was on the 12 hour flight that took me to Brazil, which if you've been out of the loop, is where I've been these past three weeks, and the second time being, as you'll soon see, the flight back from Brazil. But anyways, enough of my rambling, let's get on with the video. Okay, so this week on Joanna Does Stuff that will definitely make her cringe in 10 years time, I am going to be painting on a flight. Excuse you. I also want to make a quick disclaimer. I'm gonna try to be as little of a pest as possible because this is a flight and uh, no one's in their right state of mind. Anyways, let's begin. And thus began a roller coaster, specifically one of those where it's a 90 degree drop and it's almost certain that you'll reach terminal velocity, but some genius with white hair tells you, no, no, you'll be fine. So it's totally okay. Now for this activity, I bought this little baby sized canvas because let's be frank here, I wouldn't be allowed on a plane with a big ass canvas. The photo I was painting, let's talk about it. I found this photo during a late night deep dive of Pinterest, and no, I don't have Pinterest, I hacked into my mom's one. But anyways, I started as most painting endeavors go, by setting out my tools and sketching out the proportions. Now if you're new here, yes, your vision has not deceived you. I really do use a calculator and ruler for this step. The grid scares me, okay? So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the caliber of artist, in heavy quotation marks, you're watching right now. Anyways, about an hour and a half later, it was snack time! The flight attendants thankfully passed out these little dinky biscotti cookies, which were actually really good. I don't really want to know how long they've been sitting in the airplane kitchen, but we won't talk about that. But back to drawing I went. I would like to make it known here that this is so wrong and should not be allowed in any universe. Like, this was a bad idea from the start and I should never have done it. I'll have you know that every time the flight attendant passed by my seat, I hid everything and just seemed like I was studying how to karate kick down the emergency exits if I ended up having explosive diarrhea. Hello my dudes, welcome to flight WXYZ. The exciting thing is they're about to serve dinner. I have been looking forward to this for the entire night. As soon as I got on the plane, I asked the flight attendant whether or not there would be food. My mom was embarrassed, but I don't care. It was a valid question. I wanted food. I'm about to start the actual painting process soon after I eat, obviously, because I am quite ravenous. Let's feast. Dinner was served! I was given this chicken and barf colored rice mixture that honestly had me doubting its deliciousness, but who am I kidding? I ate it anyways. And boy was I surprised. Here I was, thinking that this would taste like burnt trash, but I was surprised to find out that it was in fact quite tasty. Maybe they had kidnapped Gordon Ramsay and had him stashed in the back just frantically cooking airplane food, but we'll never know. I was also given this brownie and cookie type thing. It was probably made of 30% plastic, 10% aluminum, 50% MSG, and 100% high fructose corn syrup. With a chicken foot somewhere in that mixture, but it tasted good, so I ate it anyways. At 12 a.m., things really started to ramp up. The sun was long gone, and I was plunged into darkness, but good thing I brought my reading light. I originally bought it for those times that I want to go to the washroom at butt freaking early in the morning, but I don't want to turn on my phone through fear of blinding my eyeballs. Other things I bought for this dangerous stunt included some watercolor brushes because I was not about to use an open cup for my paintbrush spit bucket, and the world's tiniest paint palette. And with that, I painted the first eye, and let me tell you, it looked like booty. You know what I blame it on? The acrylic paint. Usually I like to paint with oil paints because I get to take my merry time, but I wasn't about to open up a pot of solvent on an airborne plane, so to acrylics I was relegated. So I threw a temper tantrum, don't ask about the logistics of doing so on a plane, and fell asleep for a good hour. Eventually though, I woke. I was disoriented as heck, and I immediately started panicking because I realized that I'd lost a good hour of painting time and still had the entire piece left to finish. I am literally delirious. Hello my dudes. So I can't hear myself talking, so I'm just gonna do my best right now. I don't even know how late it is. You see, flying is 50% of the time complaining about your ears being clogged, and the other 50% of the time wondering where the heck your passport is. I'll see you guys in a bit. Wish me the best. We've done a lot, but we still have a long way to go. And then, I disappeared.
Just kidding, I painfully painted the rest of the eye area, and not gonna lie, it was looking pretty dope. Hey look, we're off the plane. That's right, my dudes, we had arrived at our first layover in Miami. We were just three cats out on the town. The trio, a squad, a flock of cedias. Did you know that a herd of cedias is called a seed? What? Strength in numbers, they said. You'll be safe, they said. If only they knew about the accident of 89. Nary a soul has been the same since then. All our crops gone with the wind. A barren wasteland left in its wake. Children dead. Animals decaying. Women still complaining about inequality. Old people. They were fine. It was something in the whiskey, apparently. But I'm getting off topic, aren't I? Moral of the story is lock your doors, hide your kids, hide your wife, because they'd be setting everybody's corn on fire out here. But enough of that. It's time to bore the next plane or else we'll be stranded in Miami. Now this flight, this flight was a good one. It would take us to New York in about two and a half hours time. We got lucky. The flight was essentially empty. So we had four seats all to ourselves. That's good. More space for me to be obnoxious and make a mess. I wasted no time getting down to business. I whipped out my paintbrushes, my skinny ones and my thick ones. They all help regardless of their size. I painted up a storm. Things were going by extremely quickly. A hurricane was being painted on that canvas. I was the cause of turbulence. No longer innocuous was I. Ah! I set fire to the pain! Adele, I'm so sorry. You definitely don't deserve this, but anyways. If you could please not copyright strike this video, it would be greatly appreciated. Oh hey look, it's time for lunch. Good thing because my stomach was essentially running up my esophagus with hunger. On the menu, some ravioli! I was almost emotional when I saw that thing. Why? Because I hadn't eaten ravioli in ages. And let me tell you, it was amazing. Like, what is it with airplane food suddenly being good? He really might be keeping Gordon Ramsay captive in the cockpit. Heck, he might even be flying the damn thing. But that's just a conspiracy. Don't tell anyone. I might get demonetized. Oh, and who could forget the little brownie at the end? 10 out of 1. Really, truly a gift from hell. An instant New York Times worst selling novel. Cause to lose all my senses. That is just so typically me. Oh baby, baby, oops, I did it again. I played with her heart, got lost in the game. Oh baby, baby, oops, you think I'm in love. That I'm sent from above. I'm not that innocent. Anyways, it was about 30 minutes later that the progress really started to be noticeable. I had made quite a dent in her face. Seriously, she was definitely gonna need plastic surgery after this. My mother, fast asleep, even though it was only 10.30 in the morning. My dad, he was busy playing hidden object hunt. He was really sucked into his game. It was at this point that my little book light just decided to end it all, so I had to use the airplane light. Was I being a bit of a pest? Maybe, but it was literally 10.30 a.m., so why the heck all the lights were off and everyone was in deeper slumber than Sleeping Beauty? I have no clue. There were some people awake though. They were busy watching Endgame. What's my opinion on it? Well, take everything I'm about to say with a fat grain of salt. I applaud its ambitiousness. Putting all these characters together was no easy task, and I definitely think that it couldn't have been much better than this. But that's not to say that I have zero qualms with it. Numero uno. The first time they killed Thanos, I was underwhelmed. They spent the entire prior movie trying to kill him, failed, but then were able to kill the purple troll within the first 20 minutes of the second movie. I don't know. It seemed a little bit disconnected, but maybe I'm overreacting because he does come back later in the movie, so maybe I'm being overanalytical. Also, Captain Marvel. She doesn't seem to be a part of the story, if that makes sense. She doesn't really connect with the other characters, and appears to be thrown in last minute to one, save Mr. Tin Man over there, and two, destroy the purple Q-tips flying boat. But I'm really just a viewer criticizing the movie, and I really never invest much time into the MCU, so like I said before, please take this with a huge grain of salt, and I hope that Brie Larson doesn't get too mad at me. But back to the painting. I was moving along. The nose was nearly finished. I was just waiting for the painting to start sniffing, but unfortunately that didn't happen. I think my black magic didn't really work. I bring you this footage from the airplane toilet. This leg of the flight is almost finished. We're about to land and I really should be in my seat, but I'm going out on a limb here and hiding out in the toilet. I also just wanted to let you know that I came to Tinkle and I had my headphones in and one of my ear pods fell in the toilet. So that was great. Anyways, let's get back to painting. <coughs> What did you expect when you clicked on this video? A fake blonde explaining her painting process, perhaps? A tumultuous adventure which ended in a sort of good painting? You thought I was gonna finish the painting, didn't you? 
Well, let me break the unfortunate news to all of you that you have been bamboozled. Here's what happened. We arrived in New York at around 12 p.m. and had about one hour to get to our next flight. I was ready to keep on painting. That's when I found out the dreaded news that I was not sitting with my parents. In fact, I was sitting with two other strangers. Strangers who would probably not take too nicely to the fact that I was both painting a mess and filming myself doing so. So no, I wasn't able to finish the painting. I arrived in Toronto with a half-finished visage staring back at me. But maybe, maybe there's beauty in the unfinished. Finished. Maybe we're all just unfinished beings walking around, eating up oxygen until our clocks run out. Then the question becomes, what to do with the carcass? Where do you put it? Can I fold it up? Put it away? Throw it out? The stench was unbearable. You wouldn't believe it. It was in my furniture, on my clothes. Heck, even my hair leaked the smell. I was dry cleaning my stuff for weeks. And who on earth is going to bill me for it? I cannot be held responsible for my impulses, I'll have you know. I felt entitled to a carcass and a carcass I shall receive. Don't judge me. Who are you to say that I don't deserve one? Ugh. I can't believe the disrespect. But maybe there is a lesson to be learned with all of this. Maybe we were wrong all along. No, actually, we were right. This was a terrible idea that deserves to burn in hell. Never again am I going to do this, that's for sure. And that's something we cannot be sure of either. Because if I've learned anything, it's that I never listen to the logical part of my brain and listen instead to the chaotic one. So will this happen again? Most likely. Will it be worse the next time? Definitely. Should you never have clicked on this video? Yes. And are you now paying the price for it? Of course. That's it, my dudes. Have a nice evening. Lock your doors, cross your T's, dot your I's, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.